Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Over the next few minutes we'll be presenting a quick overview of new features in Rapid Plan 3.1. This version follows our previous major update to Rapid Plan 3.0 and builds upon its stable core to deliver new tools that improve your productivity when drawing traffic control plans. Um, so without any additional delay, let's create a new plan and see the new features in action, starting with the long-awaited control point snapping. A lot of times when drawing plans, we need to connect objects uh, with existing control points. Um, to ensure precision, this was usually done by zooming in to try and click exactly in the right spot. No need to do this anymore, as Rapid Plan now automatically detects and lets you snap into existing control points. When drawing an object, just move the mouse over any existing geometry uh, to see points you can snap into. This makes it very easy to join objects precisely, uh, even when zoomed out. What I'm drawing right now is a very simple example of uh, a roadwork site with uh, a marked work area, uh, some delineators um, and distance markers. I started off by snapping into road control points, but I could have actually gone the other way, probably more common uh, when what you know in advance are the actual distances. For example, um, say I'm planning for a lane closure with a 15 meter uh, merge zone, 25 meter work area and an additional 10 meter closing taper at the end. Now that I have my distances drawn, I can snap into their control points to ensure all my objects are drawn at the right distances. Control point snapping allows me to do that um, without having to zoom in and out. So this feature is a huge time saver. As you can see, the, the drawing process is uh, quick and precise at the same time. A few more things are worth mentioning with regards to point snapping. Uh, first of all, it can be used not only when drawing new objects, but also when adjusting uh, existing control points. Secondly, uh, if you double click on a control point, you can use it to move the whole object, not just the point itself. And obviously, while doing that, you can uh, use control point snapping too. Finally, most snap points can be used to align the geometry you're drawing with an existing geometry. Uh, this might sound a bit complicated, but it's actually very easy to do. Let's look at an example. I have a road here with four control points. When drawing another road, I can snap into the existing control points. But if I also hold down the control key on my keyboard, um, the road will not just snap to the point, but also have its shape adjusted so that it's smoothly merged with the original road. Note the red arrow pointing the geometry direction. Uh, this indicates we're in the snap alignment mode. Uh, the merge direction is detected automatically uh, based on which side I'm approaching from. And again, this works when drawing new roads or when adjusting uh, existing ones. And in fact, it works for all other objects um, that have adjustable geometries uh, like marker tools, delineators and so on. Okay, so the next set of improvements we're going to look at is related to base maps. So let's create a new base map plan here. Rather than forcing north to point upwards, Rapid Plan 3.1 now allows adjusting the orientation of your uh, base maps, which is very handy when you're trying to fit a large section of a road on the printout. Uh, map bearing can be adjusted in the new plan wizard uh, where you set the plan location. Uh, either by using the buttons here or dragging the map while holding the control key down. I'll be making uh, this section of the road uh, horizontal on my plan so that it fits on the landscape page. And then I'll proceed to uh, create the plan.
When drawing base map plans, a pretty common thing we need to do is measure a specific distance on the map. For this purpose, uh, Rapid Plan 3.1 features a dedicated set of measurement tools. To turn measurements mode on, uh, use this toolbar button or press the F8 key on your keyboard. By default, we're measuring straight line distances from point A to point B. So for example, I can quickly look up uh, the width of the road here. Uh, or check the lane marking lengths and gaps uh, other tools here um, allow me to measure uh, areas and angles as well All measurement objects are zoom independent. This means that their thickness and font size are constant, uh, ensuring readability um, regardless of the current zoom level. Uh, this makes it easy to measure both large distances as well as very small objects. By default, measurement objects are non-printable temporary annotations. When you press F8 again or close the measurement panel, they're gone. Uh, if you want to preserve them on the diagram, um, you can right-click on the measurement and save it to the diagram, where a matching marker uh, gets created. The marker object is uh, automatically styled depending on the current zoom level. So for small dimensions like uh, these ones here, you don't have to manually change font size like you would if you drew the marker uh, yourself. So here's how, how the marker looks by default. Overall, we're expecting the measurement tools to be useful for people utilizing our base maps and drawing plans to scale where precise measurements are required. Okay, moving on, we'll be discussing how Rapid Plan 3.1 makes it easier to select objects for editing, especially on complex plans. Uh, first of all, we've introduced different capture modes for the selection box, uh, depending on whether you start dragging with the left or right mouse button. The default mode under the left button remains the same. The box selects all objects that are fully contained within the selected area. Uh, so in this example, uh, the left mouse button only selects one sign as it's the only one that's fully contained in the box. However, if you use the right mouse button, it will select all objects intersecting the area. In this case, all four signs. Other than the two capture modes, you can now control whether you're adding to the current selection, removing from it or creating a whole new selection. Uh, the last option is the default. Each selection box selects a new set of objects. To add to the existing selection, uh, hold down the shift key while dragging the selection box. To remove from existing selection, uh, hold the alt key. Both keys also work when you want to add or remove individual objects from the current selection by clicking on them directly. I'll also mention here uh, another improvement we made in version 3.1. Some of our existing users um, have come across a situation where a large background object uh, makes it hard to start the selection box when you're trying to select objects on top of it. Basically, instead of starting the selection box, Rapid Plan will select the background object. In, in Rapid Plan 3.1, uh, the Shift and Alt keys additionally allow you to uh, work around this problem. Hold either key while dragging the selection box and the object underneath won't get in the way. 
Mastering all the different combinations of selection modes together with left-right mouse buttons for a contained and intersecting capture might take a few moments, but for people who draw complex plans with lots of different objects, it will certainly be time well invested. To make the learning curve a bit more gentle, the selection box displays two icons presenting what the current selection mode is. The blue icon uh, presents new, add and uh, remove selection modes and the green one contained or intersecting capture. Okay, so to wrap up our discussion about selection, I'll talk a bit about another new feature in version 3.1, that is the ability to select objects across different diagram layers. Let's have a look at this sample plan where I can present this feature in action. Most people who draw complex traffic control plans in Rapid Plan are used to creating several layers hosting the different types of objects on the plan. Uh, for example, a separate layer for uh, the road network, another one for lane markings, cones, signs, uh, plan annotations, and so on. Multiple layers make it much easier to draw complex plans without other objects uh, getting in the way. However, sometimes you run into a situation where you're trying to identify which layer a specific object belongs to, and Rapid Plan 3.1 makes it easier than ever. First of all, notice how moving the mouse over an object uh, displays the name of the object. By default, this works for objects on the currently active layer only. Now, if you hold the Control and Alt keys down on your keyboard at the same time, you switch to the multi-layer selection mode. Move the mouse over any object on the plan and you'll see not only the object name, but also the layer it belongs to. Click on the object the active layer gets changed as required and the object gets selected. No more having to go back and forth between the plan editor and the layers control. Just hold the control and alt keys together and do it all with one click. Another great time saver. We're almost done with the overview of the most important changes in version 3.1. Before we finish I'll just very quickly go over a couple of new tools that we have. Marked path is a tool that was requested by uh, our customers, mostly for marking traffic flow direction on their plans. The tool has lots of uh, properties. Uh, you can adjust colors, uh, icon size, spacing, uh, and so on. You can use several different types of icons, for example, double arrow for interleaving traffic. Road region tool. This one will mostly be useful for drawing parking lots, um, driver training areas and any type of irregular shaped uh, paved surfaces. It's built on a basic curve so uh, it allows you to create just about any kind of shape you need but it still remains uh, a rapid plan road object so it automatically merges with other roads. So you can see how easy it is to create uh, a parking lot with a couple of entry roads. One last thing I'll mention is that Rapid Plan 3.1 has a built-in way to draw roads with dead ends. Select any road, scroll down to its properties to the road ends section and just pick the dead end style that you need. Flat, round or cool de sac. The last one uh, additionally allows you to specify the radius. If you're drawing a lot of plans for residential suburban areas I'm sure you'll find the simple feature useful as well. That's it for this tutorial. Uh, we went over the main changes in Rapid Plan 3.1, but if you're interested in the complete list, make sure you browse through the 3.1 changelog page for all the details. The easiest way to open the page is to click uh, this box on the Welcome to Rapid Plan screen. As always, we'll be more than happy to hear back from you, so if you have any comments or suggestions, please feel free to get in touch with Invariant Technical Support. Hope you enjoy using Rapid Plan. Thanks for watching.